Hey everyone, Jolt here. Today I'd like to show you how you can use Obsidian Excolidraw together with Excolidraw.com to facilitate online workshops with breakout rooms. We're going to look at how you need to prepare for the workshop, what you do during the workshop, and finally what you do after the workshop. But before diving into the details, let's look at how this looks like in practice. So imagine you have a workshop and you're going to do root cause analysis, options analysis, and then finally planning in your workshop. And you have four different groups that you're working with. Group one, two, three, and four. Now here you can see my workbench for the workshop in Obsidian Excolidraw. Actually, if I zoom out a bit, then you will see that on my workbench, I have the work template for the individual sessions. Right now, it's only the root cause analysis that I have active in each of the workbenches. And then let's look at how this works. So these are Excolidraw frames. And if I move these here to the right hand side, so you can see them together with my browser, then you can see that here, if I move around here, hopefully you can see that orange bit in, the, in group four, or if I change to group two, then you will see the green bit in group two, etc. You can imagine that as the different themes work in the different groups, you can see their action live on your workbench. So if in group two, someone draws a circle here, then you will see that group two is drawing a circle. Now, if in group four, someone draws a diamond, then you will see that diamond being drawn and you will see that moving around real time. This is no big magic. This is the basic whiteboarding feature of Excolidraw.com. The big thing here is that you can see all the action in your different groups at the same time in one location. And indeed, if you want to join one of these groups, you can click here to interact. You can make this full screen and you can add your own circle as well. For example, I'm going to add this blue circle. And just to show you how this works, if I come back to excolidraw.com, you can see that the blue circle appeared here. So I was able to interact with the theme through my workbench right here. Now imagine that you've completed your root cause analysis and now you're ready to move on to the options analysis. If you've prepared your templates for the various parts of the workshop, then all you need to do is to right click on options analysis, click copy, and you can go one by one to each of these panels and you can just simply paste your options analysis template and you can move on to the next one. Similarly, you can just simply paste the options analysis template here and so on. You get the idea. You can quickly add the next template for the discussion for each of the groups. And if you do this, first of all, this is pretty quick. So I was able to add these very quickly. And of course, as you would expect, these templates appeared on each of the workspaces. And of course, again, if now I'm going to zoom out again so you can see the content on the right hand side, if group three or actually group four adds a rectangle here, then you will see that that re rectangle is going to appear. Of course, this is pretty simple because now we have the collaboration template. So this is the basic idea. So now I'm going to walk you through on how you prepare for the workshop, what you do during and what you do after the workshop. So let's start with the workshop preparation. First of all, you need to create a workbench in Obsidian, which is just simply an Excolidraw file. So I have my empty scratchpad document here that we are going to use for this purpose. Next, you need to create the collaboration frames. So how is that done? We're going to use an Excolidraw script for that. If you're not familiar with Excolidraw scripts, you need to first click on the Obsidian Tools panel. Then you need to click on the 
script library. And here, if you type collaboration, then automatically you will jump to the Excolid Raw Collaboration Frame script. You click on the script and here you can click the button to install the script. I'm not going to install it because it's already installed. If you want, you can also watch this video that will explain you how the frames work, but I'm also going to show it to you right now. So once you've installed that, then on the command palette, Control or Command P, you can just simply type in collaboration. And when I click this, a new collaboration frame is created. Now note that to create a second collaboration frame, you shouldn't be alt dragging this because in this case, you can see that the link up here starts with to be and the link up here starts with to be, you just simply duplicated the same collaboration frame. These are not separate frames. This is all pointing to the same virtual room. What you need to do is instead of alt dragging, you need to open the command palette again and you need to type in collaboration frame and create a second collaboration frame. And you can see that this room now starts with the IT 23F and so on. You can create as many collaboration frames as you want. Now, in terms of the collaboration frames, you might want to make them larger. The reason for that is if I use the default size for the collaboration frame and I make it full screen, then you can see that in Obsidian, my zoom is 155%, in Excolidro it's 100%. And what that means is when I draw, then the drawing is not going to be sharp. So what I would need to do is I would need to size these frames to be roughly the size of my screen like this. And then the zoom in Excolidraw and in Obsidian is going to be roughly the same and the images will look much nicer. So this is something that you may want to do to increase the size of your frames like this. So I'm now manually changing the size. This is really just a nicety. It works without this resizing as well. The next thing you need to do is you need to create your activity templates. So the way I've done it was that first of all, I have these examples here that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to copy my fishbone template and I'm going to come to my workbench and I'm just going to simply paste my fishbone template like that. I'm going to copy my bridge map template. Let's just select everything and I'm going to copy my bridge map template and I'm going to bring it over here. I'm actually going to group these items so I can move it around more easily and I'm going to increase the size just slightly. And then finally, I'm going to take my options analysis template, copy this and bring it over to my workbench as well, like this. So now I have these three items here. Optionally, if you want, you might want to frame these. The benefit of framing is that if I frame this, so this is now going to be my frame one, and then I'm going to use the frame tool again, and this is going to be frame two, and this is going to be frame three. It's easier to pick these up and move them around if they're in a frame. So that's the basic idea for framing, especially if you have multiple components for an exercise, you might want to use a frame. Also, as you see around the fishbone, I created the frame that is much larger than the fishbone itself. So it's not, it gives people space when they work on this in the collaboration space. But again, just to show you how this frame works, if I come over here, then in the collaboration space, you can see that I can pick up the frame and I can move the frame around. Now, additionally, what you might want to do is you might want to 
right click on the objects your template and you want to lock the template what this results in is and let me show you here as well participants will not be able to change this they can select it but they are not going to be able to move it around they can only move their own items around this is good if you don't want them to mess up the template so this was done by selecting the item here and clicking lock all and selecting this item and clicking lock all now a side effect of this is that now you are not going to be able to unlock it so this is now permanently locked the way to unlock this fishbone for example it's a bit tricky you need to right click on the frame you need to remove all elements from the frame so now the frame is empty and now i can right click and i can unlock the fishbone oops i can unlock the fishbone and this way i can again change the contents of the frame and if i move the fishbone back in here i can lock it again and the fishbone is locked and now if i copy the frame of course it will be copied together with the fishbone so that's i think uh, what you need to know about the preparation plus of course if you have your frames ready you might want to pre-populate these with the first exercise so i'm just simply going to paste the fishbone in here as well as i'm going to paste the fishbone in here as well so now both of my collaboration spaces are prepared for the workshop with the initial frame in there we talked about optionally locking elements and we also talked about pre-populating the frames moving on what do you do during the workshop so first of all you need to share the frame links the way you share the frame links is pretty simple you activate the frame and here if you click you can copy the link like this so you can select and copy the link alternatively you can click this to activate the frame and here you can click on the open current link in browser and this will open this link in the browser and again you can simply select the address copy and share it with the team you can do this here as well you click here on open current link in browser and the second collaboration room is opened and you can simply share the link from up here that is going to be the collaboration link of the team now once you've shared the frames or shared the collaboration rooms you can simply go back to your workbench and you can monitor activity so this is what we've did we've done earlier as well you can see how the different teams are drawing and interacting on each of the frames and this way you can follow if a team is stuck because they are doing nothing or a team is progressing nicely or they've come to complete their exercise and finally when the time comes you can add the next activity to the frames which we already looked at previously so the way you do this is very simple you click on your next frame the next exercise you copy this and then you navigate to each of the collaboration rooms and you just simply paste this and organize this here so it's in the collaboration space and you do this with the second one as well and this way you can very quickly add the second exercise for people to work on and that's pretty much it it's a very simple process and i think it's super useful and then finally what do you do at the end of the workshop so if you want you can zoom out and create a screenshot to share with the team so in this case i could actually zoom all of these drawings so that everything is visible on them like this and then 
when I'm comfortable with all of this, I can just select the screenshot tool and create a screenshot like this to share with people. That is an option. I think it's a nice way to share a complete overview of the various themes and what they've worked on. And finally, you may want to create a local copy, though you don't need to. So the collaboration rooms are saved into perpetuity. They are not going to be deleted. Also, the collaboration frames are encrypted. Of course, if someone has the link with the link, they are going to be able to open the room, but otherwise Excolidraw is end-to-end -end encrypted, which means that on the server where Excolidraw stores your drawings for the whiteboard to work, the drawings are encrypted and only with this room ID and key, anyone is able to open and access those files. So first of all, that's important to note that your drawings are going to be saved and retained into perpetuity. So whenever you come back to your workbench, it is going to be as you left it, unless of course someone opened it from the team and added some modifications. And for this reason, if you want to be sure that you sort of store the final result, you can also click these to activate them you can press ctrl a and you can just uh, ctrl c to copy like this and you can come back to your obsidian workbench and simply paste the elements in and this way you can save group one and then similarly i can just ctrl a ctrl c and bring over group two's work and I can do similarly with uh, group three work as well, control A. And then if I zoom out, I can paste it here. So this way you can also save the results of each of the team's work in your own workspace. But again, the collaboration rooms are going to be saved into perpetuity. So that's all. That's the simple process of how you prepare what you do during the workshop and after the workshop. I think this is super, super, super useful. If you're doing collaborative work in workshops, I think this is much better than Miro. With the overview screen you get with the templates you can do and also in your workbench, you can link to materials in your Obsidian Vault and reuse stuff very quickly. The whole process is slick, it's comfortable, it's very user-friendly, user and it's also completely free. So I hope you liked today's video. I have another idea as well that combines Obsidian with Excolidro.com for theme collaboration in a corporate setting. So I'm going to share that in the next video. And a quick final note, this idea about using Obsidian Excolidraw with Excolidraw.com this way to facilitate workshop breakouts surfaced during the office hours of the Visual Thinking Workshop Cohort 5. And I want to highlight that Cohort 6 of the Visual Thinking Workshop is starting in less than a week time. It focuses on processing a book into visual notes, but along the way we talk about PKM best practices, we talk about getting things done, we talk about all sorts of interesting things that you can do with Excolidraw and Obsidian and how you can manage knowledge and how you can create efficient workflows. So if you're interested in learning more about visual thinking, learning more about Obsidian Excolidraw and explore some other use cases like this one, I encourage you to sign up for cohort six. You still have a couple of days and then we can continue the discussion in the workshop. Thank you.